So, how can we protect ourselves from phishing attempts? The best way for us to protect ourselves is to stay alert, learn how to recognise them and avoid opening suspicious attachments or links. This can often be quite difficult when mails or social media links are well created. About 65% of us will make the mistake of opening them at some stage. Here are a few really useful tips though that will help keep you safe. Some phishing emails are actually very easy to spot. When we get warnings in our browser, like these ones here, pay attention to them. Other times, we might not get a warning, but it's still usually possible to recognise a phishing email if you just look for the signs. Here is an example of a generalised phishing email with the telltale signs circled in red. Check the sender's full email address. Is it official? Is it the correct spelling? Does it have a different ending than usual? We can see this email is not from an official account. Do they address you by name? Somewhere you hold an account with should have these details. And crucially, if you just hover your mouse over the link that they ask you to click, you can see in the bottom left hand corner the website it would actually bring you to. We can see here it's clearly not what it's purporting to be, in this case Facebook, so we should not click the link. Sometimes phishing attempts will try to hide where they're taking you to by using a shortened web address, like bit.ly. In this case, you can check where it's trying to bring you by simply copying and pasting it into a service like unshorten.it. Anytime you are sent a link or arrive at a page you weren't expecting, check the link. You can check links by copying and pasting them into virustotal.com to see if they have any known malware. However, this does not catch all malware and you should still follow all the precautions too. If you are particularly high risk, you might get an email targeted specifically to you called spear phishing. Be cautious of all unexpected emails asking you to open an attachment or click on a link, especially ones with attractive propositions or ones that sound urgent. Hackers often try to get us to bypass our normal security checks in a rush. Sometimes one of our contacts is successfully phished and their account is used to target their friends. You might become suspicious because of the tone of the email or message. Do they sound like they normally sound? Do they make spelling mistakes that you wouldn't normally expect from them? If you are suspicious, you should contact the person who sent the mail. It is vital to do this through a different method. For example, if someone sends you a suspicious email, if it's safe to do so, you should call them to confirm that they sent it. Otherwise, the adversary may pretend that the phishing attempt is real. Phishing attempts can also be made through platforms such as Skype, Facebook Messenger, Twitter, and even messaging services like WhatsApp and SMS. If you do end up clicking on a phishing link, you may get a warning, like this one, in your browser. You should not ignore this. Now we will show an example of what can happen if a phishing attempt is successful. Here it appears to bring us to Dropbox. It asks us to enter our Google username and password. When we sign in, it asks for a phone number and recovery email, which they can then use to bypass a suspicious activity alert. In this case, it then pretends to open a document. The hacker can now try to access all the information in our account. This is made more difficult if you already have two-factor authentication enabled on your account. In the case of Gmail, we can check to see if they have tried to log in by clicking on the activity details in the bottom right hand corner. If you get an unexpected email attachment, if everything else looks okay, open attachments with Google Docs instead of downloading them to your computer. This means that any possible malware would not be downloaded onto your device. If you cannot open it on Google Docs and it's an unexpected attachment from a stranger, you should just email them back asking them to give you the information in the body of the email or in a Google Doc form. It doesn't take a minute. Sometimes, if you open a malicious attachment in Google Docs, it can lead you to a page that makes it look like you've been logged out and need to re-enter your details. But 
the details would actually go straight to the hacker. The crucial thing to remember here is never re-enter your login details when prompted unless you logged out yourself. You can also check a suspicious file by uploading it to VirusTotal. Just make sure you don't open it. The main thing to remember is that a phishing attempt is usually something an attacker knows we would want to open. For example, an email from our boss, an urgent request from a friend in trouble, or a video of an atrocity in the area we work in. Think now for a minute about what someone might have to write to you to get you to click on a link or open a file. What might it say?